வணக்கம் children with flexor tendon injuries what is so great about that we do flexor tendon repair for a lot of adult patients and a few children but flexor tendon injuries in children are obviously a different ball game due to many reasons and that is what we are going to see in this video how are they different and what are the tips to get good results following flexor tendon repair in children flexor tendon injuries in children are quite rare when compared to flexor tendon injuries in adults in fact a study done in 2007 showed that the incidence of flexor tendon injury in children was about 0.036 per 1000 with a peak incidence occurring at 3 years of age and most of these injuries were caused by glass and knife lacerations when such injuries occur in children all we need to do is repair the cut tendons as provided by the different protocols isn't it actually it's not that simple because basically children are not miniature adults and the management of flexor tendon injuries in children has some unique features concerning the clinical features and the type of presentation the timing of surgery the surgical technique involved the post operative protocols the post operative assessment after flexor tendon repair in children and the complications that can occur specifically in children first let us consider the differences in the clinical features of pediatric flexor tendon injury the most important is the phenomenon of trapping while asked to flex the fingers children usually do a quick flexion and they hold the finger that has been injured within the grip of the neighboring finger that is acting and it makes it look as though there is no injury to the flexor tendon this is a natural movement that occurs in children's hands it is called trapping and because of this feature there is a delayed diagnosis in 25% of children on the first consultation obviously the consequence of this delayed diagnosis of flexor tendon injury in the finger of the child's hand includes irreversible myostatic contracture of the musculoskeletal unit loss of flexor sheath patency and sometimes even impairment of digital growth the best way to overcome this phenomenon of trapping and not getting trapped into making a delayed diagnosis is winning the confidence of the child this may not be possible in a single consultation and may need repeated consultations so that the diagnosis can be accurately made the next different feature in the management of pediatric flexor tendon injury is the timing of surgery in adult flexor tendon injuries we have typical time periods in which the flexor tendon repair can be done the primary phase the delayed primary phase and the secondary reconstruction but in children we need to remember that whatever time they are seen after injury they need to be advised exploration and primary repair a study showed that delayed primary repairs up to 76 days post injury have been reported and good results have been seen in children up to 2 months post injury also even when we do a repair of the cut flexor tendon in the child there are certain differences from repair in adults generally in adults increasing the number of strands across the tendon repair will result in improved function and will reduce the time to initiation of therapy and also decrease the rate of complications but in children a study comparing two strand and four strand techniques showed no difference in the range of motion or rupture rates even after the tendon repair is done in children there are certain characteristics that are going to modify this post operative protocol the first is that children will not wear a splint if given a choice and they will not be able to follow instructions for therapy 
All they want is to play. In adults, we have different regimens of post-operative protocols following flexor tendon repair. But as far as children are concerned, studies have shown no difference between early rehabilitation protocols and four weeks of cast immobilization following flexor tendon repair. A study from 2007 showed that rehabilitation protocols such as the Kleiner protocol are beneficial in children older than six years of age. But these protocols are difficult to use in younger children. At the same time, what Strickland showed in 1980 was that immobilization following flexor tendon repair for longer than four weeks causes functional decline. To get predictable and better results following flexor tendon repair in children, a study in 2004 tried Botox injections into repaired flexors and also techniques like suturing the fingertip to the palmar skin so that there was no inadvertent extension of the fingers. So it would be easy to remember that in children less than 6 years of age, immobilization for 4 weeks would suffice and in children more than 6 years of age, a dorsal blocking splint for 3 weeks to prevent accidental forced passive finger extension will be useful. In both these age groups, even after the POP is discarded, it is difficult to get the child to do therapy. What can be done is play therapy. We can start the therapy initially with very soft materials so that the child can use the fingers for flexion and after 6 weeks, clay or putty can be used which helps in resisted exercises. Following flexor tendon repair in children, post-operative assessment is also different and it poses two problems. The first is how do we assess the results? And second is what happens with growth of the child? One of the methods of assessing flexor tendon repair in adults is the boys method where we measure the distance between the pulp of the distal phalanx and the distal palmar crease. You can see the details by clicking on the link above. But the use of this method of assessment in children is a little difficult because this method requires a cooperative patient to sustain maximal flexion while the measurement is being done. And not only that, can we use adult values for children because there are no separate values that were described for the use in children. The second technique of assessment of flexor tendon repair in adults is the total active motion, the TAM which requires cooperative patient able to maintain maximal digital flexion. The use of this method for assessing flexor tendon repair in children showed in a study in 2012 that zone 1 repairs showed better motion than zone 2 repairs and within the zones, there was no significant difference between early motion and 3 to 4 weeks of immobilization. The second important point with the post-operative assessment in children are the changes that occur with growth of the child. The growth would be in length, width and thickness, especially the pubertal growth spurt. These two have to be considered when assessing the results of flexor tendon repair. The complications that can occur following flexor tendon repair in children, the post-operative tendon rupture, which is difficult to appreciate in children because of limited digital motion from the post-operative immobilization. If the rupture is recognized early, re-exploration and repair are advisable. But if the age of the rupture is unclear or the tissues are inflamed or the child or family are uncooperative, secondary reconstruction is ideal. Tendon adhesions are the second group of complications that can occur following flexor tendon repair and more so in children. If there is minimal active motion and full passive range of motion, tenolysis is recommended in such situations. It is important that the procedure be done under local anesthesia, which is quite difficult in children. And also we need to remember 
that after flexar tenolysis we need to have mobilization protocol post operatively so to summarize in pediatric tendon injuries especially of the flexar tendons there are differences in clinical features timing of surgery surgical technique the post operative protocol post operative assessment of the flexar tendon repair and the complications as far as the clinical features are concerned in a child in whom a flexar tendon injury is suspected in a finger we should always remember this feature of trapping where they use the normal fingers to flex the injured finger as far as timing of surgery is concerned the earlier the repair the better will be the results a two strand technique or a four strand technique there is not much difference between the two as far as pediatric flexor tendon repair is concerned the immobilization protocol is ideal for children because the early rehabilitation has not been shown to give better results but we need to remember that the immobilization must not go beyond 4 weeks post operative assessment methods are available for adults but for children they are still under study complications like rupture need early recognition and repair and complications like tendon adhesions need tenolysis procedures i hope you liked the video i enjoyed making it please do click on the shown links to see more about burns in children and other such videos and do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery plastic surgery trauma surgery and ethics